All these Korean students are going to learn. They don't even speak much English. No? Amazing thing is this. They don't even speak much English. And yet they go there. And they can be able to express love of God. Do you know, to show love, you don't really need so much about word. You know that? It's just a matter of uh, your heart or your willingness to go. Willingness to go and make it changes and see what they can do. Now our heart is, our prayer is that they will go after their training and become their friends for the next six months. How many of you happy today? Let me see your hand. Happy. Are you sure you're happy? Are you very sure you're happy? Good. Turn with me. Uh, to the book of Luke, chapter 5. This is very, very uh, popular passage, you know about it. And I would like to share from here. What can release the miracle? People like to see miracle, right? People like to be happy. People like to be changes things. And why this doesn't happen and why things happen to certain people? Let's we just see from in here and the, what, what the Lord is saying to you today. Okay? Verse 17, all the way to verse 26. Let us get together. Do you have Bible? Yeah. Sunday when you come to the house of God, bring the word of God with you, okay? Look at the 5 verse 17. One day he was teaching. Pharisees and teachers of the law who had come from every village of Galilee and from Judea and Jerusalem was sitting there. And the power of the Lord was present for him to heal the sick. Some men came carrying a paralytic on the man and tried to take him into the house to lay him before Jesus. When they could not find a way to this because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and lowered him and his man threw the tiles into the middle of the crowd, right in front of Jesus. When Jesus saw their faith, he said, Friend, your sins are forgiven. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law began to think to themselves, Who is this fellow who speaks blasphemy, who can forgive sin but God alone? Jesus knew what they were thinking and asked, why are you thinking these things in your heart? Which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralyzed man, I tell you, get up, take your man and go home. Immediately he stood up in front of them, took what he had been laying, lying on Lying on and went home praising God. Everyone was amazed and gave praise to God. They were filled with awe and said, We have seen remarkable things today. We have seen the remarkable things today. Some say, not some say, actually, many people say, What you eat, that's what you are, right? You know that phrase very well, right? What you eat, that's what you are. Okay? You eat healthy, you be healthy. You eat junk food, you will get sick. No? So a lot of things. It's because of what we eat, the result it comes out through your life, your body, right? Likewise, how we think every day determines what you are today. How many of you know that? What you think, how you think, it determines who you are today. So my uh, thing is today is that you are thinking determines your life. Your thinking determines your life. Okay? And we're going to see through this passage. How? Why? See, God created mind, right? Why God created? God created all things. Created. The creation world was in God's mind. It was come from His mind. That's why He created. Why is that? Why? Why did God create minds? 
Why can just God make us like a robot, you know, like a robot? They were robotic, where you control the, you know, little buttons and you're moving around. Right? Why didn't he do that? Why did he create this mind? And then Proverbs 3 say, watch your heart and mind. Because what you think, that's, that's what is going to reflect in your life. Proverbs say clearly, watch your heart your mind. Watch your heart and your mind. And this is what Jesus said. Why are you thinking these things in your heart? In your heart. Why are you thinking these things? Okay? These are the people who are sitting right there. And they begin to think. Something is happening. We will see here. Something is happening. But there are a group of people who doesn't do it. Group of people who think negatively. Everyone can come to church. And they are eating from the same place. That they can, yet they can have this negativity in there. And I see that very often even in our church. Maybe because our church is right in the downtown east side. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe because of that. Because if you're looking into the spiritual eyes into this history, this is the worst place that you can ever, you know, imagine. You see the spirit of murder, you see the spirit of adultery, you see spirit of immorality, spirit of hate, spirit of all sorts of stuff. Everything is in here. Maybe that is why when they listen to the same word of God, yet some people got the wrong understanding. Why is that? Why are we all in the same table? Some is very happy, some is not. Huh? Some is very full and long fat, and some is felt that you know, they didn't have enough and always hungry. Why is that? Have you thought about that? Why? Whatever is your heart, whatever is in your heart, your mind can make differences. Whatever is in your heart, it can make differences. Your mind can make differences. Think about this. If God is the whole of your mind, God can use you as your vessel. <laughs> How many of you hear this? If God, whole of your mind, God will use your mind and you as a vessel for Him. But if Satan holds of your mind, what happened? Huh? You have become a God's vessel or Satan's vessel? Yeah. If a world holds of your mind, then what do you become? Worldly. That's all. So you need to know who holds of your mind today. Huh? What is holding of your mind today? Well, God? For yourself? I don't know. That's why it's very important to change our mind, right? Romans chapter 12, 2, he said, renew your mind every day. Renew. <coughs> why? Everything comes from here. Remember, I said many times, your problem begins right in these six inches. All your problems in your life, right in these six inches, is from right here. You eat it from the same place. You eat it from the same table. But yet some are full, some are not. Some are always grumbling, some are always lacking up. Why? It's all up here. Why is something so growing and some is not growing? Have you thought about it? Is it because the person is so into God and some is not? No, is it all because of your mind? What do you think? Pharisees was in that, that right in that place. They saw what Jesus was doing. And yet they could not believe. How can this man forgive sin? How can they say? How can? We know the story so far. Yet the Pharisees come say, how can this man? See, we can come to the house of God and we can able to enjoy it. But there are some people, even in seeing this place, always questioning, always negative, always criticizing, always asking questions. What? How about we asking God, why like this? Why like that? Why? 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 Have you not questioned God? Sometimes, if, you know, God put people into authority, and we also question, why? Have to ask ourselves a question. What's in your mind? Think about this, David and Goliath. David's mind was full of God. Right? His mind was full of God. Was he not in the world? Yes, he was. Was he educated? Well, no. 
was just a shepherd boy. But all he had was mind of God. His mind was full of God. But what about the Goliath? Huh? Oh. You know that he's mind. And then you know the results so well. Who had the minds of war? They fit it. Who has the minds of God? Had a victory. Right? Why? Because the reason David won that battle is because his mind, his thinking, okay, brought the victory. It's not about himself. He said, well, I'm going to go there today. I'm going to kill the Goliath and I'm going to get all the glory and praises and I want Israel to worship me. Ha! You think that was going to give him the victory? No. So I'm going to go there and I'm going to kill that defiled man who defiled the name of God. This terrible, this uh, lousy Philistine guy. I'm going to kill him off. Why? Because he had this righteous anger in him. To just listening from the, this Philistine to mocking God. What was going on in his mind that moment? Oh, I'm going to go there and kill this guy. Just like I killed the bear. And then I'm going to receive the big award from the king Saul. No. His mind was full of God. If our mind is full of God, anything that happens around us, we don't see that negatively. We will say, praise the Lord. We see the challenges. We see the God's work in this place. We see, we're going to see that again our God is going to turn around and become a blessing. But, we don't do that. We like to go back and, yeah, 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 yeah. Why? Because your mind is not in the full of, you know, mind of God. Think about this. Give another example. What about the thief? When the thief comes in here, what do you think they will think? They will look around and see what can I steal? <laughs> what can I steal? And here we, oh, oh, thief came in, we're going to watch you, what it's going to take. Right? What's in the minds of thief? But still, how can I steal? What is there? Wherever he goes, his only thing, he sees the only thing is that, but he can steal it. What he can steal from. That's the minds of thief. Minds of God. God's people. Okay, let me ask you this. God's people. What do you have in your mind? How can I take a little benefit out of it? How can I take my name great through this? How can God use me and give me a great name and great respect? Think about it. Conclusion of that, you know, thief's life, what happened? He's going to jail. That's where he's going to live. Okay? What did Jesus say? What did Paul is saying? Okay? Then you as Christian, what kind of things that you should have in your mind? Yeah, I can give you all the list of you know, the positive thinking. But let me say this. Philippians giving us very simple, but yet very powerful solution. To order to have a mind of God. Those who have a mind of God, this is what they will do. They rejoice. They rejoice in the Lord. Philippians chapter 4 verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord. Always rejoice. Sometimes it's hard, isn't it? Huh? How can you rejoice when you're going through a tough time? Huh? How can you be able to praise God when you're in the deep, deep trouble? Then I can tell you this, not the story of the Bible, say, you know. We know the life of Joseph so well. <laughs> How did he rejoice? Wrongfully accused, sold by his own brothers. Oh, I can say all his life he can go, go with that. Oh, what idiotic brothers I have. And begin to hate them, right? No. We see very clearly the result. Say, no. What you have done? As well, God, the God purpose allowed this. So that he can create this whole blessings. You see, that moment, he could have gone through all the hatreds and the, all the memory and the, all the stuff, you know, and the pain and hurts. I went to both reserves and I went to many other reserves. I see most of the common things is the pain. Pain. So it's so painful they cannot even function. 
It's so painful. We see so many people are using the drugs and alcohol here. Just to get away from the, the pain and alcohol. You know, get away from the pain, they use using alcohol and drugs as, you know, their solution. Why? The question is, why? Simple. Unforgiveness. Huh? Simple. Their mind is full of bitterness. They choose to have bitterness. Choose to live with the hatred. Choose to unforgive. Simple. That's simple. Some of you can say, well, Pastor, what do you know about forgiving? What do you know about God? Hey, I know. I know. I've been through. <laughs> One time I had to cry out so six months. I said, no, please. I want to curse the person. I want to, you know, I want God to punish the person. But I said, Lord, you bless him. You bless his family. Lord, you bless them. Bless their ministry. Lord, you bless them. Just bless them. I don't care how you're going to bless, just bless them. Why? I trust in the word of God. I choose to bless. I choose not to curse. See, whatever you think in your mind, that's what you're going to be. You want to leave with the bitterness. You want to leave with the distrust. Go for it. Church, you can go for it. You will have a really good life. You think so? No. But if you can have the mind of God, uh, fill your mind and rejoicing in Him every day. And that even though how difficult situation may arise, life is like that. Life is full of uh, these situations. We see like a story of Brother Roberto. Yeah. Doctor said you cannot, you're gonna die. He takes the choice. He takes the choice. He makes the choice and stand on the word. And stand on the belief that God can heal. And God heal. You choose to stand on the place where oh no, I cannot do it. Oh no, I'm going to fail. Oh no, I, I, I'm done with it. Yes, stay there. The question is there. Why, why is the people going through that? Why is the people always have these negative things in their mind? Let me tell you something. Why is that Christian, this person has a positive mind and believe in the word, and another person is not? Why are they going through this? Very simple. Your experience of salvation is a very weak. You don't understand full meaning of salvation. If you fully understand what Jesus Christ has done for you on that cross, you cannot live your life as what you've been living. There must be a transformation. There must be a change. Because his death on the cross becomes so real in your heart, it will change the whole thing. Why some people are willing to give their life to God and some are so covered that they couldn't? Because they don't fully get the meaning of the cross, the salvation. If you fully experience the salvation of God in you, you will never go back. You will never return to the, your own vomit. You never return. But why are you returning back to your vomit? Because you don't understand the full meaning of the salvation of God. Oh. Yes. If you understand the full salvation, you will never go back. You can ask me, Pastor, what do you mean by full salvation? Did you not have salvation? If you do, then your life should change. Your life should transform. You are longing for the presence of God. You are, you are dying to do everything to walk in the righteousness. You don't want to mix with the sinful ways. But your mind goes around with the things of the world. Your mind runs to the negative way. Your mind goes into the murmur and gossip and backbiting. You, you choose to dwell in there. Why is that happening? Because you choose. No, Pastor, I didn't choose, I just came up. Yeah, right. Nothing just came up. Whatever is in your heart, it will come up through your mouth. People who murmur, people who gossip, people who backbite. I can tell you, watch out of their life. Church, be fearful. Be fearful, you as a children of God. Huh? We have very little time left. 
Be fearful what God can do. Hmm? Be fearful and start living the righteous life. You have no time to live in the wish-washing life and continue to break in the church and continue to live with the gossip and backbiting. It doesn't ever happen. If you continue to live like that, I can tell you, God is going to deal with it. Huh? What's in your mind, that's what your life will be. How you think, that's what you're going to be. Every day, you think about the things of the world. Huh? You think about the gambling, you think about the drug, you think about this, you think about that. I can tell you, the devil will take hold of your mind and will take you right there. At the end, you know what is the result of that end? You will be in the pitfall. You will fall down there and you're going to cry out there. Change your mind. Scripture says so often, change your mind. Change your mind. Why am I saying this again and again? Because it's so important in this church. You need to transform your mind. How you think, that's, what it, that's the way you're going to live. How you think, how we think. This is the way either we're going to destroy our lives or you're going to build up your life. You're going to bring the glory unto God. Amen? How many of you thinking that your life sucks here today? Huh? Uh -huh. How many of you really think your life sucks? Huh? I want you to think this. <coughs> Jesus Christ, <coughs> the Son of God. We sang the song just now. The one who had no sins, come and die for you. You must be worth something, isn't it? You must be very precious. If God is willing to allow His Son to die for you, you must lose something. Then we have to live like that. You can't say anymore, my life sucks. Or I have bad days. Or my life so bad, I don't like it. Who chose that life? When God gave us life, He said, He gave us abundant life. He wants us to be blessed. He wants us to live with all the blessing of God in our life. Then turn with me to Leviticus. Uh, Okay. Uh, sorry. Turn with me to Deuteronomy chapter 13. Okay. Chapter 30, verse 19 to 20. Okay? Thank you. Listen to this. He said. When such a person hears the word of this word, he invokes a blessing on himself, and therefore, oh sorry, I've read it wrong. It's verse 30, sorry. Verse 19, okay? This day, he said, listen to this. He said, this day, I call heaven and earth as witness against you. He said, who said this? Okay. Who said this? Okay. Listen to this. I, okay, said I will be the witness against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Now choose life. He said, I have said, who's that? Moses? No. God said, now, today, I have set. Huh? Put the witness, and I put a set and said, life and death. And curse and blessing. In Deuteronomy, he said, I have said this. So who will ever choose? And there is there are children who do not know this law. Oh sorry. Uh, I was reading 31st, okay? And in verse 20 he said, And that you may love the Lord your God, listen to this voice. He said, listen. He said, and then what? And hold fast to him. For the Lord is your life. And he will give you many years in the land he swore to give to your father Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay? The promise is this. He said, you, you may love the Lord your God. Listen to this. He said, listen huh? to his voice. Huh? And hold fast. Hold fast. Okay? If you listen to the voice of God, if you listen to the word of God, your mind cannot be negative anymore. Your mind will not be grumbled anymore. Your mind 
cannot live on the old backbiting words in your, your mouth, okay? You will not. You cannot. You will not. If we listen. So, think about this. What we think, how we think, is going to reflect, it's going to be our life. Then what you're going to think? How are you going to change your mind from today? He said, I have set before you the life and the death. Blessing and the curse. Which way do you want to live? Halfway? Life and death between? Blessing and curse between? You can't live between the life and death. You can't walk in, walking on walking on the blessing, between the blessing and curse. You can't have either one, right? If this is the promise of God in us, what are you going to think from today? How are you going to start thinking today? Huh? You see yourself, well, I, I'm stuck. I got nothing much. Start thinking that way. Why? And always thinking, always conscious, you know? Why is the, you know, Joseph's life so good and why my life sucks? Why Daniel's so good? Good job and why I don't get a good job? Yeah, start comparing. Start cursing yourself. That's cursing yourself. God blesses me faith like that. I want to have faith like that. I want to walk by faith and believe in that and I will put it into action and Lord, I will go and I will search for it and Lord, you will, whatever that you have for me and you're going to give it to me. You begin to believe that and you walk on the path. I can tell you, God is going to open up the door. We cannot be the people who are sitting on the, you know, below the apple tree and say, Lord, just drop the apple right into the, my mouth or you can cut it piece by piece and just throw it into my mouth. You know how many of us we do that? Sitting there saying, oh, just open up the door, just scare it to me, boom, let it come and play. He's not a genie, okay? God is not a genie. And we think, many of us think God is a genie. God, please give it to me, you're sitting there. How about you go out and ask? How about you go out and work? Some say, I have no job. Hey, go look for a job. You will find one. Ask the Lord, Lord, I need a job. Could you please open the right job for me? I believe God will do it. I hear so many testimonies that God has given. Think about this. If, if we were praying and said, God, we need a two cow, please. We start with the one cow, actually. So Lord, give us a cow. And then we say, Lord, just give two cow. God, give two cows. If God can do these kind of things to the fathers and to this church, why wouldn't God do that for you to, in your life? Think about this. If God can give two cows whenever we ask, huh? if God can give it to this place, why wouldn't He give it to you? Have you asked this question? Come on, you have a mind, okay? Use your mind in the right way. Asking God a question. Why God do you give it to them? Why don't you do that in my life? Stop thinking. <laughs> Stop thinking, okay? Thinking the right things. Well, how can I cheat Pastor Deborah and get a little bit out of it? How can I cheat the photos and get a little bit out of it? How can I just come in and do a little bit of a volunteer and tech so much? <coughs> this is place here. Yeah. This is what I like about my, this place. Yeah. We are giving people. Okay? We don't mind to give. Come and take. It's fine. You know, just ask and we will give you whatever you need. Whatever we have, we can able to do, we will give. That's our, our policy. Think about this. If we can do that, how much more God can do? Sometimes we get stingy, okay? When we don't have enough, then we can give. But God is not like that. God is not like that. For the sparing the gospel, just you know, sharing the love of God, we can send the teams to the different places. It costs money. How many of you know God gives us free gas and God gives us free car, free insurance, so we will go around? No. If we gotta go to an island, we gotta pay the you know, ferry, ferry tickets. Nothing is free. But we're doing it. Why? Our mind, we have God's mind in our, our mind. Okay? We have God's mind in our mind, in our heart. That's what God wants, we go. It doesn't care whether we're believing or not in internally. We go and believe in the God we do. You know that? Some people think, oh, Paul Paulusville is very rich, they, they go to mission all the time. Hey, that's not true. Yeah, we are rich in the Lord. Every time we trust, Lord, you will provide. Whatever 
we are exceeded, you're going to give it to us. And we do our part of going by faith. Thank God for us. Remember? It's not because we got so much. This is where, this is the place where we practice faith. Faith. I want to tell the church, lead by faith. You know why? Because that way your mind becomes a mind of God. You begin to have that God's mind in you. If you have plentiness, you don't need God to tell you. You can do things your way. But because of well, well, where we are today, we can able to trust in the Lord every day. Every day, God, what do you want us to do? God, do you want us to go this? God, do you want, do you want to feed these people? Do you know one of our uh, company where we uh, uh, deliver the vegetable for us, they cut us off, right? Because they didn't do well these days. Because of the HST, right? Now, we, are, we pray as a Lord. We need a fresh vegetable. Fresh food, please. Without this, our people just gonna have you know only the cover. We need a fresh festival to filling up your people. Give them good things, so we can give them good things. God is giving to us. When I came, we didn't have nothing. When I left, actually our our kula was almost empty. The the our volunteer said, say, "What happened? Why is this place so empty?" I said, just wait, you pray for us, that God will give us more than enough. And then it started coming. Yeah. You know, it started coming. When I came, piles of vegetables, you know. I said, wow, what a blessing. This is the thing. God can do that only this mission, only, only this place, and only, only missions like the Union, Union Gospel or Salvation Army. No, God can do that in your life. What's in your mind today? Let me ask you, what's in your mind? What is in your mind? What are you filling your mind with? Negativism that I cannot? Are you filling your minds with all the worldly things? That your desires? Let go. Let God become. Fill your minds with the God. Fill your minds with the God's mind. Fill your minds with the word of God. Fill your mind as I can do all. Because scriptures are rejoicing in the Lord always, not only sometimes. Oh, Certain situation where everything goes well, no, you stay in always. Yeah. Always. When you go tough time, okay? When you through, when you're going through worst time in your life, I was talking to Brother Sam, he said, he's dying. I said, I know he's dying. He, he got no joy, he's so black, and I said, what's going on? He forgot about God. He's filling his mind with all the past. I said, that's something wrong. Start filling your mind with God. Filling your mind with the hope. Filling your mind with the word of God. Even if you die tomorrow, it's okay. Why? Because you're going to heaven. You're going to a better place. Why are you feeling? Today you're living in hell. Because your mind is filling with all the negative. What are you filling your mind today? God? A world. All your heart, your own selfishness. Huh? It's not about you. How many of you know this? It's not about you. It's about God. About you. No, it's not about me, brother. It's about God. I wish it's not about me, but it's about God. The reason that we're doing this is because it's all about God. So you think about yourself. God put you here today. God brought you into this place today. Why? Is it because to make Pastor Deborah looks nice? No, I should go preaching in the bigger church today. You know? It was feeling good when I was preaching the, you know, that there's a thousand people in the one in the church. You know? How nice just preaching those places. But no, God put you in here, God put me here, God put you right here for a reason. You need to start changing. How many of you know this mission's name is Paulus? Huh? Yeah, Paulus. God brought you here for a purpose. God wants to mold you. God wants to rebuild you. God wants to re, you know, reconstruct your mind so that your mind is no longer running after the world but running after God. Amen? Amen. Your mind is no longer after the, your selfishness and your, your fleshly ways but God's ways. 
God is reconstructing your minds. God is reconstructing your lives. How many are willing to give that to God? See, if you sit there, talk, pastor, you can preach whatever you want to preach. Like if God wants to, let God do. You know, let me tell you something very important. God cannot do anything unless you open up. Unless you open yourself and say, God, come in and do something. God is not kind of a you know, thing where just coming to anybody's house and stealing things. No, He's not. He's very gentle God. Our God is very gentle. He will not force you. Why things happen in someone's life and that doesn't happen to you? It's very simple. You're not opening your heart. You have received the great salvation. The greatest things in your life. And yet, you're so selfish. You say, God, you only be my Lord. But you're not opening your He said, I cannot come in. I cannot change you. I cannot do anything because you block him. You close him up. He cannot do it. But yet you say in our mouth, oh God, just bless me, bless me, bless me. How can you bless me? You need to open it. How do you think that is what is going to be your, that's your life. How do you think that is your life? Think about this. I'm back to the, my scripture. The full man who carried the paralytic man. Huh? This man gets healed not because of his mind. He got healed because of this full man. Full man, they saw the obstacle. That is all too difficult. Let's drop him off. Since you've been a paralytic, why don't you stay as paralytic? They can drop him off and then they can take him just leave. Or they could have said, well, let's just wait until maybe Jesus is finishing everything and when everybody leaves, maybe that time he can do something. But no. This four men's mind was totally different. They were willing to go far more. Not just overcome the obstacle, they were willing to go up to the roof. You know, it takes, you know how hard? You try to push somebody, okay, carrying this man and walking up to the roof. During that time, their, 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 their staircase is not so wide like ours, okay? It's very small. Probably just one person goes up, okay? Just big enough to one person go up and down. Four men, two in the front, two in the back, carrying this man up. It wasn't the easy target. Wasn't the easy task, but yet they're willing to do. And carrying up there, you think, oh, suddenly what? Wow, there's a big hole open for them? So they can just put this guy right into the way Jesus said. If we're looking at the scripture, just as it is, maybe you don't see it. But I want you to picture that in your mind for a minute. They are in the rooftop. They have to figure it out the way Jesus said. Because scripture said they lowered him right in front of Jesus. So they have to figure where Jesus said and begin to dig, begin to opening up the rooftop. And think about this, when they begin to open it up, don't you think it should drop on the front of Jesus? Huh? I think so. Just think it. Obviously, we are so nice people, no? You guys have so simple mind, just accept things as it is, right? But no, just imagine for me. Somebody tried to open up this ceiling. A lot of things, the risk of falling down. You think Jesus didn't know? I think Jesus knew. I think he waited. Even though seeing the, all the deep bruises is come, coming down on him. I think he was waiting. Don't you think people run up there and try to stop them? I'm sure there was some kind of commotion was going on. Yet this poor man, his, their mind was set to bring this man to the front of Jesus. They have faith. If, I can, if we can only bring him to the front of Jesus, something will happen. Something will happen. But then, you know the other story, right? He got healed. He got peace of man. What was more, more <coughs> important thing in here? Healing this man or forgiving sin? That's the question the Pharisees have. What is more difficult? Forgiving sin or just asking men to pick up the man? Forgiving sin is more difficult things. How do you know you are forgiven? 
When they say your sins are forgiven, they can they cannot understand. See, that's who we are. We gotta see something. Jesus, pick up. You want to see pick up, and you will. What is more difficult, healing this man or forgiving him? Some say healing this man is more difficult. Forgiving the sin of the man. Right. See, positive thinking always release the blessing of God. Positive thinking, people who are people who have positive thinking, they are happier people than the other people. Positive thinking always bring the great blessing on the every area of their life. When I say their life, it means your home, your children, huh? Your words and everything, your marriage, everywhere. If things you take positively, things are going to be changed. Use the blessing of God. Huh? Positive thinking, always release. Release blessing on the every area of your life. Okay? How can you have that positive attitude? How? It's the choice. Nobody gonna give it to you. Nobody gonna give you the formula. Formula one, two, three. It's the way you do. It's your choice. Today, I'm gonna, I'm gonna think positively. I'm gonna rejoice in God. Then you're gonna have it. If you say from today on, I'm gonna be grumble, grumble, and I'm gonna murmur, and I'm gonna be unhappy. Please do so. Then you're gonna be. That's why we have a phrase, right? Oh, the person must wake up from the wrong side of the bed, right? Why? It's choice. Choose yourself to thinking and say, I'm a lousy. My life sucks. So be it. But if you turn around and say, I'm a blessed. And I'm here today. And I'm going to make differences. I'm going to be happy today. I can tell you, you will be happy today. Amen? Amen. So what do you want? What choices will you make today? Hmm? Grumbling is also choices. Right? Murmuring is also choices. Backbiting was a choice, right? Committing sin is also your choice. Don't say, oh, something made me to do it. Nothing makes you to do it. Your choice. You make the choice, right? Thinking bad things. Talking bad about others. It's not all choice. If this is choice, what's going to happen to you from today onwards? What are you going to choose? Huh? If you want to be happy, that's choice. You want to be joyful, that's your, your choice. You want to be uplifting, that's also choice. You want to be compassionate, that's also choice. I can choose not to be compassionate, but you can make the choice today. You want to be merciful, that's also a choice today. Amen? So, how are you going to do today? How are you going to live? Whatever the circumcision, circumstances you have today, you can make choice to be made better. It's all in your power. That God has given us that choice. Given us the mind to choose the what is the right things. Give us mind to be rejoicing as well. He given us all the formulas. But today, the most important part, not following the formula, but the most important part is your heart. What are you going to choose? What are you going to choose? Amen? I'm going to ask uh, Pastor Michael and uh, uh, Brother Ben to come and help me out on this communion. And our uh, worship leader to come and help me out on this. Today is uh, communion day. I wanted to share this with you for the whole last couple of weeks. It was brewing in my heart. Why? Because this is, I thought it was needed in this church. I want you to know. As this communion, Cups and the bread is goes around. I'm going to take it, don't need it, hold it, and I'm going to think about something about yourself. I'm going to think about it. What are you going to choose from today on that? If you've been bad fighting, you've been talking bad about the others, I want you to keep that to God. I say, Lord, I want to give my mind, my negativism into your hands. You open up your heart and your mind, say, Lord, you come in. And Lord, you washes me and help me through. So I can be able to see things in your ways. I'm going to tell the God, talk to God right now. Those who receive, don't 
Don't drink it, don't eat yet. And we're going to do all together. But I want you to examine yourself. I want you to examine yourself for a moment. And think about yourself. God has given you the greatest gift that is salvation. Don't let the salvation become so light. You know, it's not the way you can take today and you can give away tomorrow. Okay? Live up to. Live up to that level when God said, You are my son. If you are son of God. You are sons and daughters of God. How are you going to live today? How are you going to start thinking today? Are you still going to say, I'm a failure? Are you still going to say, I cannot do? Are you still going to say, my life sucks? I want to look to God. Say, Lord, you can change my life. Lord, you can do something about it. I will give all my negativism. And I want to open it up to you. All the things that I have done, I want to open up to you. You just talk to God. I want you to stand up. Okay? I want you all to stand up. As a worship leader leading us. And I want you to just reflect for a moment. Let me go ahead. As worship leader sings, I don't want you to sing with the hymn. I want you to reflect. I want you to think about yourself. Think about yourself before the Lord. How are you doing today? How's everything with you? I don't know what's going on. But God knows you and you know your children. I want you to give them to God today. Speak to God today. Say, Lord, you know me. You know, God knows you. God knows the numbers of your hands. He knows you. How do you talk to us? Just close your eyes. Just for a moment. Make back to the God. Don't come to the communion table with all the sins. All
Jesus Messiah. Name of all name. Bless the Lord. Amen. Because of 
Jesus Christ what he has gone through for me. I will say, I can do all things. And I will rejoice in the whatever the situation and one of the circumstances. I will do best as I can. And I want you to take this prayer and take it and receive it from the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us sing together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. As you I want you to think about the agony that Jesus Christ has gone through for you on the Calvary. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Think about the good of that place. Hallelujah. There was one man who refused to believe. And there's another who believed that he was the Messiah. And Jesus said, Today you will be with me in paradise. People, you are God's people, you are God's children. Because of what he has done on the Golgotha place, the thorn crown that you couldn't bear, you couldn't wear, but Jesus Christ wear for you. You can crucify yourself on the cross, but He crucified for you. He was pierced for your transgression and mine, so that He can give us new life. The nail pierced into His feet. You and I couldn't do that. We could not bear that. But he bear for you and I. I want you to believe who you are today. You are the child of God. You are the one that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the most high God, who came and died for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, thank you for your great love. Oh, thank you, Father. Oh, we are just straight to the hell, but you rescued us. You chose us to become your children. Today, Father, transform our mind as we open ourselves to you. Transform our minds so that, Lord, we will think now only of you, Lord. Replace our mind with you, Father. To your ways. To your ways. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The supper. He took the cup and he blessed. And he said, This is my blood. There's a new covenant that comes in. Do this whenever you drink it and remember this. Jesus Christ. The sinless man, the holy God who came, he crucified himself on the cross. His blood was shed for you and I. And that blood is still flowing from the Calvary up to this place, into your heart. And he said, he will never remember your sins again. You are washed. You are cleansed. And as you partake this today, if you have sicknesses in your body, I want you to believe God who loved you so much, gave his only son, is also willing to heal your disease. He's going to heal your disease to prove to you that he is your God. So therefore, I want you to drink it and proclaim today. Say, Lord, thank you for healing my disease. Amen. Let us drink it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to just raise your hand and thank the Lord. Say thank you. Thank you, God, for healing my 